you choose. And I want to talk to you today about what's in a name. I want to talk to you about the name, not necessarily your given name, somewhat about that, but I want to talk to you about what's in a name and the, the, the names that we, we give to people and the names that people give to us, the things that, that they call us or we call other people. And I, I want to talk about those t- today. And some of those are like loser, uh, shorty, never heard that in my life. Uh, <laughs> Uh, poor, broke, thief, you know, just all these things that, because we, we put labels on people and we we judge them by the label that we put on them. So, some of us, you know, before before we met Christ, we wouldn't hang out with certain people because of the label we had put on them. And, and don't, don't you, isn't it true that we can, you can sometimes in your flesh, you can look at somebody and in a minute sum them up and decide if you're going to be friends with them or not. Well, that is just a crime. It is a crime. And I want to talk to you about that, about what's in a name. What's in the name that you call somebody? What's in a name that someone calls you? And, and more importantly, what is it that God calls you? What, what is it that He says about you? Because it's really important what God says. It's, you know, it, it does affect us what other people say. But the most important thing, what you got to really believe, is what does He say about you? Because if, if it's not what He says, then it don't matter what anybody else says. They might state the facts, and I preached about this a while back. They might state the facts about you that you're a thief, but that's not the truth about you because you once were a thief. You're not a thief anymore because God has set you free. So the truth is, is you're forgiven. The fact might be you're a drug addict, but the truth is, is not now you're you're a delivered drug addict. See, there's a difference, and it's it's very important what we say about ourselves and what we say about other people. How many of y'all have heard the little saying that says, uh, "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me." Yeah, we've all heard that, right? We all agree that that's a complete lie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who made that up, but that was stupid. <laughs> you know, you go, you go home and tell your mom, 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 they call me short. You know, I was like, sticks and stones will break your bones, and words will never hurt you. That didn't make me feel any better at all. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm still short. They're still gonna call me that tomorrow. <laughs> it's not helping me at all right now. But it's it's funny how we we. Even in church though, even in church service, we, we will put something to a little rhyme and make it make it rhyme and we, we make them, we say things that have no truth in them. But because it's rhymes, you know, it rhymes or it's an anagram or something, somehow it's supposedly truth, you know. The truth is only what he says. Everything else is not truth. It might have some truth in it, but if he says it, it's truth. If he didn't say it, it is pretty close to a lie. Amen. <coughs> There's a, a funny thing that uh, kind of got me started on this message a few weeks ago. Uh, the occupational name coincidence. In, in the olden days, you know, when, I guess when they were handing out last names, if you were the guy, if you were the donut maker, then your last name became Baker. If you were the, uh, the, the blacksmith, then your last name became Smithy or Smith. If uh, you know, you know how that all that kind of stuff works. So a lot, of, a lot of names that you can trace back. Now, if you have a name like Birkins, I don't even know what that's about. I don't know. Maybe we burped and we couldn't speak real good or couldn't spell. I, I don't. It, yeah, Birkins. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but you know, back in the in the back way back, you know, that's that's the way that you were to receive your name. But it's really, it's, there, there is a, a phenomenon that it just blows my mind, and I, I did a little research this week on it, uh, of how people uh, have become their last name. And that's what I want to talk to you about, because if you're not careful, you will become what people speak over you. You will become what people say about you. If you're not careful, you will become the very thing that you hate when people say it, but you will become it if you're not careful. That's what Proverbs 18.21 says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you, if you're gonna, if you open your mouth, you've got to realize when you're talking, you are either speaking death or life over somebody. Yeah. And when your ears are hearing, you're either hearing words of death or life. That's why, you know, I, I, I'm a... Let me just make sure you understand where I'm coming from. I don't watch rated R movies. If you watch rated R movies, I'm not mad at you. I'm not upset at you. I have two reasons. Number one, I like to sleep at night. And anything demonic just scares the whiz out of me. And so I don't sleep after those kind of things because I'm just like, whoa, 
you know, anyway. And the other thing is, is these ears are God's ears, and I don't like the F bomb going off every 15 seconds in my head. Because I will start believing that, I will start being that, I'll start speaking that way, because I will become what I hear. Because if you hear it long enough, you'll start to believe it. And if you start to believe it, you will start doing it. Amen. So here's some name occupation coincidence. We'll start off with a very funny one. Uh, Thomas Crapper. <laughs> Thomas Crapper, who was baptized in 1836. He was a plumber who founded Thomas Crapper and Company in London, and he popularized the flush toilet. <laughs> I'm not I've researched this. It's on the internet. His name was Crapper. And he got into the toilet business. One of the landmarks in London, one of the tours will actually take you to see the, the manhole covers that he made. And it, the, the research said that people will stand there and giggle and take pictures of the manhole co cover because it says Crapper and Company. <laughs> Winston Payne is a dentist in Albuquerque. <laughs> Winston, I'm going to go to see Dr. Payne, and he's going to drill into my head. <laughs> yeah. Scott Speed. Scott Speed is a Formula One driver. Won many, many races. This is crazy. Daniel Webb became a website developer. Yeah. It's just crazy. Some of these I can't read. Or, or, well, not Sunday morning. Uh, I have three Three doctors, they all have the same last name, and they're chiropractors. Their last name is Bone Break. <laughs> Dr. Robert Bone Break in Kansas, Dr. Connie Bone Break in North Carolina, and Dr. Alan Ray right over in Dallas. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Now, I don't think it's because his mom called him bone break and I thought, y'all got to do something breaking bones. But there's got to be some kind of psychological thing going on. There's got to be, this, this is just the beginning of the list. Uh, Dr. Michael Slaughter. Oh, boy. Put you. We're going to see Dr. Slaughter today. Oh, yeah. Please pray. <laughs> yeah, for the surgery with Dr. Slaughter. <laughs> I couldn't believe this one. A dermatologist. His last name is Rash. <laughs> Dr. Rash. And he's a dermatologist. I want to go to Dr. Clear Skin. I'm going to go to him. Dr. Baby Skin. That's where I'm going. Not to Dr. Rash. How's it going with Dr. Rash? Well, you can see. I mean, good dream. <laughs> In Indiana, there is a realtor has a real estate company, and his actual name is Craig Greathouse. <laughs> Craig Greathouse. Johnstontown, Pennsylvania. There was a trial a few years ago, and they convicted a KKK leader of setting, setting uh, fire to crosses in people's yards. The KKK leader's name, Barry Black. <laughs> you watched TV a few weeks ago, Anthony Weiner. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. What is he? That's like, they say that life is stranger than fiction. That is crazy. <laughs> Should have been named Anthony Foote. He wouldn't be near as much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a trustee on the epilepsy.org board. Epilepsy.org. The trustee's name, Simon Wigglesworth. <laughs> A few years ago, there was a businessman who actually was convicted of business fraud. His name, Jeremy Crook. <laughs> How do you not say guilty when you're in the, in the juror box? His name is Crook. A journalist, New York City, 
different other places in the world. Bethany Lie. Her last name is Lie. My personal favorite. Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra. They actually have a man. His name is Iccolo Miccolo. <laughs> plays the piccolo. And he plays the piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> Iccolo Miccolo. Iccolo Miccolo. Playing the piccolo. <laughs> That is just. If you want to have some fun on the internet, just do a little search. Just put in uh, occupation name coincidence. <laughs> it's really easy in this world. It's really easy to believe the things we hear, especially if you're young and you're growing up. People begin to begin to label you and classify you and categorize you. It's it's really easy to begin to believe those things. Especially if you're if you're in a home that maybe is not a godly home and maybe no one has ever you've never heard that verse that what people say you could easily become. And if you've never heard that, that death and life is in the tongue, it's really easy to to get into that that uh, that zone of, of just saying what you think and you know and just basically puking on people and just putting people in boxes because we, you know, we just think, you know, because it's funny that that old saying, you know, sticks and stones won't hurt me. I mean, words won't hurt me. It's funny that that only works when you're the one saying the words. When you're the one hearing the words, that doesn't work at all. When you're the one saying the words, it seems like it's okay. We can just say that. It's just funny. And, ah, you know, all that kind of, where's the ego though? Make it though. You know, just make it fun. All that kind of stuff. You know, just crazy stuff like that. But the thing is, we've got to realize that there's more at stake in people's life than them just living, breathing, and dying. God has a plan for their life. And it's important, especially as the church, especially as moms and dads, especially as leaders, it's very important what we say about people, that we see them what God sees them, say about them what God says about them. Because if we don't, we can easily put them in a box and stop them from their destiny and their plan in their life. If, you, if you've ever had trouble with addictions... You know how hard it is to ever get out of that stigma. If you've ever been to jail, you, you know that's on your record. If, you know, if you've been to penitentiary stuff, you know how hard it is to get past that stigma. If you're divorced and you, you want to get married again, you know, when they find out, you know, that you've got to get past that. There's a label in your life that, that people will put on you. And if, if you're not, if you don't have God in your life, it's going to be almost impossible to get past what the label is that people have put on you. And church, hear me. It is it is vital for me. I don't care what other churches do, but in this church, we're not going to label people. If, if you want to label somebody, you 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 don't say a word until you can see something good in them, and that's what you need to speak over them. You don't you don't begin to call them. You know what they did in the parking lot. You call them by what God calls them. We've got to say what God says and shut our mouth when the devil's talking. And I have a policy years ago in ministry, and uh, I, I would always over. Uh, still do this a lot. I would over uh, classify people. Uh, Pastor Jared from Cleveland Family Fellowship, whenever, he, whenever I see him, I say, hey, Dr. Jared. And, and he's not a doctor. He's never been to doctor school. He's, you know, but, but what I'm doing is I'm prophesying into his life. I'm speaking something above and beyond what he could be. Because I believe there's going to be a day that he's going to be a doctor of theology and he's going to raise up other youth pastors and he's going to be able to speak in their life. But I, I just want to be, be the first one, okay? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to look at you and go, oh, well, you know, you're just poor. Man, I want to speak that you're blessed. I want to speak that you got money. I want to speak that you're taking me out to lunch. I want to speak that, that you're buying me a new car. Because if I can start saying, you know, that may not ever happen. I don't know God's direct plan for your life. But I don't want to dare be the person that pulls you back. Because I understand what it's like when, when people say you can't. I know what it's like when people say over you, you'll never change. I know what it's like when they when they try to put you in a box. You know, I was a church drummer for years. And I loved it. But when I stepped out behind the drums, people would go, oh, you're just a drummer. Well, let me tell you something. There's a lot more going inside of me than playing the drums. There's a lot more going inside of you uh, than, than what people say about you, than, than what they spoke over you, than, than the box they put you in. It is time for us to rise up and get out of the box and quit putting other people in the box. To be the man or woman of God that God has said that you can be. And be free to be that person. Come on. Hallelujah. says 
says about you. I believe that God is raising up new ministers, new, new ministries from family lines that have never been used in that way before. God is not looking for your 